structure or struct how to use it and why would we need it now very first thing you would do is you in in, in your project you would add a new file and C++, C and C++ type files, header file, next and put in a name, my header and all, my header for example and click create, I've already done, I'm gonna click cancel but you, you will create and it will add a file called, I'm gonna just get rid of that, my header.h file, now in, in, within the my header.h file you want to import foundation slash foundation h and then uh, this is what you would type now there are a couple of different uh, variations of that but uh, the most popular with objective c programmers is that you type type def struct within braces you're going to have some ids properties and uh, the name you will know it by my customer Then within the braces, I have an integer int property ID, a string type property called first name, and if you want to use an string, I'm showing an example that you gotta type these words underscore underscore unsafe underscore unretained because automatic resource arc does not allow Objective C types in structs, so you gotta type these. You can you also use a care, star, last name, two different ways of having strings. Then another property into sales. Now in order to use it, we're going to do a number of things. For example, in my customer class, what I'm going to do is I have to import my header.h file. First of all, I'm going to declare a method that basically looks like this method signature it's an instance method it returns my customer type the struct and uh, the method name is get customer it takes in a parameter of my customer type we'll within this method we'll know it as the customer then in the .m file, I have the implementation of this file. This the customer dot last name. Now that's how you can access those properties. Is equal to add a, add basher customer dot first name. What was the first name? First name was an Objective C and a string type, so that would be at. Uh, within you know at double quotes and uh, last name like that the customer dot sales 1000 and we return the customer so this month it takes in a basically it takes in a customer type fills in some values maybe it'll do uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send in the ID and it'll you know maybe perform a lookup from the database fill in the first name last name sales for this particular customer that has the ID you know perform lookup based on ID and then within the controller I'm gonna create my customer the struct I'm gonna refer to it a concrete instance of that struct underscore my customer underscore my customer ID I'm gonna set it to one then into the customer class I'm gonna create an instance of a concrete instance of uh, the customer customer class and then I'm gonna send to that concrete class get customer method and my customer struct type and it's gonna return back to me fill in populate that struct and I'm gonna capture it back into my customer so if I run this as an example you'll be able to see it fully what's what I'm trying to do so as at this point I have a struct type underscore my customer 
I have set ID equal to 1, first name we know nothing about, last name we know nothing about, sales we know nothing about. We're going to send it, create an instance of the customer class, call a method in it, and perform a lookup, set, up the, uh, set the last name, first name, sales, and send it back. And when I come over here, I capture it under my uh, underscore my customer. Now underscore my customer has that last name, the first name, and the sales. So using the structure, I sent it in, and I was able to get back all these values. So your struct is basically you know has a number of properties, very easy to set, very easy to create, right? And it could have one, two, three, four, five, up to ten properties, twenty, however many you want it'll fill them for you the fun method does something and sends it back to you so that's how you can how you declare a struct in a header file then wherever you want to use it import it and then pass it around as method parameters and get it back now you see how I uh, put my struct in a dot h file and if you look in the on the examples on the internet you will see them they declare here and there and uh, all kind of explanations but you want to use it in your iPhone programming class and that's in my opinion is the best way you declare it in a central location you might have more than one structs all defined in one dot each file you know from here all the way down you may have also protocols that we're going to talk about in the next tutorial or possibly in the same tutorial you can define them in the myheader.h file and then you can import it wherever you want to use it otherwise if you see the examples on the internet they sh you declare it within the file and use it in there what if you want to use it in many many different classes so that's the most flexible solution that I have proposed here that you put it in a header file then wherever you want to use it you are using it here and we are also using it uh, here in two different places without having to type it over and over again so that's one other technique that I wanted to present to you so now that we have set up uh, our basic structure with structs let's talk about protocols what is a protocol why we need it a protocol simply means that it has a number of methods and then for each class you can declare it that this class must implement this protocol then when somebody tries to compile it it'll, it'll warn them and encourage them to actually implement those methods the reason you want to do that is because you want to design it and then you want to leave implementation for somebody else but you want to say hey these methods must be in there so that, that's how you do it you want to keep it in a central location and you know my header.h file we say add protocol and we give it a name that we were gonna be going to know it by my protocol one and then within angle brackets and its object and that's a protocol in itself so the protocol one in has must implement protocol the NS object the protocol of NS object the angle brackets are telling me that NS object is a protocol now within the, uh, here I have declared two methods instance methods returns integer add takes an integer type number one to integer type number two so takes two parameters number one and number two and adds it number one to number two same thing for subtract here's a method signature for subtract now if I want to use this let's look at customer dot h how would I say that customer must implement protocol my protocol one I've done that by angle brackets and typing in the name of the protocol within it now if I try to compile it it's gonna award me and say hey in incomplete implementation 
and if we look at issues issue, issue navigator it says that uh, customer.am must have in, it has incomplete implementation method add is missing and method subtract to is missing see if I click here it also tells me that so that's a warning and that's what I get by designing protocols and specifying a class must implement that protocol now it's up to me as a programmer I could be the programmer myself to add those two methods in there what if you have two protocols you want to force you will just put a comma and type in the next protocol my protocol 2 if I had one I don't have it so I gotta delete it so that's what the protocol is how you can centralize protocol declarations and utilize the